So Michael Popak, Legal AF, let's go over the real reason that two more lawyers have departed uh, the representation and the defense of Donald Trump in criminal matters. Jim Trusty, who used to work with the Department of Justice and work with Jack Smith and John Rowley, they're out. And they're out, they say, on their own. They didn't, they didn't give the reason. But here on this hot take, I'm going to tell you what really happened because it's easy to see what's really happened. Boris Epstein, who is an in-house lawyer and fixer for Donald Trump, fired through Donald Trump, Rowley and trustee because they're his, uh, the client got indicted. And Donald Trump, it was in magical thinking land, thinking that this meeting earlier in the week that was only attended by three of his lawyers, Lindsey Halligan, who's a young lawyer down in Florida, they brought along for the ride, but really the two lead lawyers, trustee and Rowley, trustee having a relationship with Jack Smith, dating back to their time serving together in the Department of Justice, and Rowley, and they've been the lawyers that argued everything related to Mar-a-Lago at the 11th Circuit in front of Eileen Cannon and everything else. They were canned. You know, it, when they say they weren't canned and they left voluntarily, the fact that Donald Trump, as soon as they announced, jumped on his social media and said, I'm replacing them with, and get this, with Todd Blanche, a New York lawyer who has no role, has no role in the Mar-a-Lago matter to date but has been representing him in the uh, 34 count indictment in state court in New York related to business record fraud brought by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. That lawyer, Todd Blanche, brought in by Boris Epstein. Boris Epstein, I'm sure, after they tried to uh, meet with the Department of Justice, Rowley and um, trustee, just earlier this week, and also met with the Department of Justice's senior leadership, about the indictment and couldn't stop the indictment two days later, that led to their firing and getting canned. Lost, they, uh, Trump lost confidence in them. Boris lost confidence in them. And Boris brought in his, his trust, his reliable lawyer that he thinks anyway, Todd Blanche, to be the new lead lawyer down in Miami. So put aside all the other media speculation or trust these comments that he wasn't fired. I mean, two days ago, he was on cable news just yesterday, just yesterday, defending his client against the indictment. And within hours, he was fired. For those that don't practice law or follow law and politics the way we do here on the Midas Touch Network, that is really unusual. You don't fire your criminal defense lawyer the day you get indicted when your criminal defense lawyer has been with you all along the way trying to fend off the indictment. Now, if trustee did a terrible job in managing expectations of Donald Trump, who's always in some sort of magical thinking land, that he, if, if Donald Trump really thought that a lawyer was going to be able to stop the freight train of the special counsel and get them to drop the indictment with a meeting earlier this week, then he's, then he's more delusional than I thought he was. So, the best that trustee and Rowley could have done was to pick up information and color around the indictment that was coming a day or two later. That's it. That's the best they could do. But the fact that Donald Trump said, let's see what happens to the meeting. Oh, you, oh, I'm indicted. You're gone. You're out. And who's his henchman to do that dirty work to fire those people? Boris. Boris, who's the fixer, part-time lawyer, practiced law for 18 months. And this is not, if you're thinking, God, didn't I just hear about other Mar-a-Lago lawyers just quitting recently? Yes, because everybody wants to get away from this contaminated bomb blast of Donald Trump, including his lawyers, because you're, you put your own bar license in jeopardy by representing Donald Trump. So Tim Parlatore, who was, rep, who was kind of running side by side, parallel to trustee, representing Donald Trump on all things Mar-a-Lago, who handled the actual records delivery and was there along with Evan Corcoran, you know, was there, uh, you know, uh, on the scene, so to speak, during the search warrant. He got out of the case two weeks ago, and he did so in a noisy fashion, giving a CNN interview in which he said, I couldn't do my job because Boris Epstein got in the way of my ability to investigate and look for documents at Bedminster. And now we know from the indictment, with the pictures of the bathrooms and ballrooms and other rooms at Bedminster, that that was a place that Donald Trump used in his shell game. One shell was Bedminster, one shell was uh, originally the White House, and a third shell was Mar-a-Lago. And who moved the shells around for Donald Trump? Waltina Nauta, a former uh, a naval officer 
who was his body man, valet, butler, whatever you want to call it, depending upon your era, who was the guy that moved the boxes around and moved them in and out of Bedminster, in and out of the White House, in and out of um, Mar-a-Lago, on private planes for Donald Trump, where we saw boxes being loaded in photos earlier in the year, in SUVs being driven and putting back in there after Department of Justice left, the FBI left, the head of the counterintelligence division left. And now Walt Nauda has the, has the honor and the dishonor for Donald Trump of being an indicted co-conspirator along with him. But why trusty? Why is trusty gone? I've always said he had the best chance of cutting a deal, although Donald Trump will never cut a deal, with, with Jim Trusty, who had some sort of rapport and relationship with, with Jack Smith dating back to their time serving together as younger division heads at the Department of Justice. Now they're gone, replaced by Todd Blanche and a, and a law firm to be named later, literally, is what Donald Trump said, because they need a Florida lawyer to handle the, whether it's Miami or someplace else in the Southern District of Florida, handle the day-to-day as local counsel to guide um, now a Todd Blanche through this process. But don't be fooled. Every lawyer that's touched Mar-a-Lago representing Donald Trump, he's lied to, and they've left the case at one time or another, whether at the beginning when Donald Trump was having them lie to the National Archives, which is all documented in the indictment, those lawyers, gone. Evan Corcoran, who he lied to about what was in the storage room at Mar-a-Lago, where other documents were or were not located, that they had already been offloaded to Bedminster, that they were in his office in a locked drawer, or strewn all along in various places in a way that the people's records, the presidential records, should never be treated. This is why this man is unfit to ever serve as the moral leader and the leader of the free world, the president of the United States, the way he treated these documents. All national security documents, national security and national defense information, NDI, some of which classified and top secret. Evan Corcoran, who handled the search warrant and subpoena, and Donald Trump lied to so that he would lie unwittingly to the law to law enforcement, to the Department of Justice and the FBI, gone, but left behind audio tapes of his own musings about his client and 50 pages of attorney notes that he had to turn over to the prosecutor because another federal judge, the chief judge of the district court, found that there was more likely than not that Donald Trump used his lawyer to commit a crime or a fraud. Evan Corcoran departs the case three weeks ago. Tim Parlatori was the records custodian who signed on the dotted line and told the federal judge back in District of Columbia that he had searched diligently all these places, never telling the, the federal judge that he was blocked by Boris Epstein, at least at Bedminster. He departs the case and tells the world why. And now, not even the 11th hour, the 12th hour, indictment day, the lead trial lawyers, trustee and Rowley, Say, see ya and or get fired by Boris Epstein, the more likely scenario. And either way, what does that mean? Yet another lawyer, this one being Todd Blanche, who's already going to trial in March of 2024 in the criminal case related to Donald Trump, 34 counts of business fraud up in New York, now has to play serious hardball in a federal court with federal rules and procedures and federal oversight by the highest judges of the 11th Circuit and ultimately the Supreme Court to get this case to trial in a similar time frame. And I know know all the efforts he's going to make. Motion to dismiss the indictment, denied. Ultimately, denied. Motion to attack the grand jury proceeding as being flawed, denied. Motion to to, uh, uh, stay the case until after he's no longer a candidate for president, denied. That's what's going to happen. But trustee and rally have put themselves either voluntarily or involuntary behind a, a, blast, a blast shield to get away. And ironically, Boris Epstein is this close to being his own, being a target or a witness for the, for the prosecution. His own cell phone was picked up in a search warrant, a subpoena, a subpoena by the federal government. And they've had it. They imaged it. They looked through it already. They know all the text and context they've had with um, Donald Trump. So he's tainted. 
why he's still the one as the puppet master under Donald Trump bringing in lawyers, I have no idea. But that's where we are. So today, uh, check your watches, everybody. At 6.20 or so, the new lawyer for now is Todd Blanche, who represented at one point Paul Manafort and some other uh, MAGA right-wing Republicans. He's a reasonably well-known criminal defense lawyer. Don't think he has any relationship at all with Jack Smith and special counsel's office, who's going to be prosecuting this case. But um, for anyone out there that's uh, trying to uh, make a lemon lemonade out of lemons, there's no lemonade to be made if you're Donald Trump. He's just lost his fourth or fifth set of Mar-a-Lago lawyers, either by his own hand or by people quitting, all the way from the beginning, the middle, and now the day of indictment and the announcement and unsealing of that 38-count indictment crossing eight different federal laws, starting with espionage and ending with conspiracy and obstruction. We're going to talk more about that when we unpack that indictment right here on the Midas Touch Network on hot takes just like this one, where I sit as a practicing trial lawyer in courts just like the Southern District of Florida, where I also practice. Um about every day. If you like this one, give me a thumbs up. It helps with the quantity and quality of what we're doing here on the network. Follow me on the Midas Touch Network's podcast called Legal AF on YouTube and every place you get a podcast um, where on Wednesdays and Saturdays, we bring all these stories together, the best of them, curate them and bring them to you. If you like what I'm doing, you can follow me, Michael Popak, on all things social media at MS Popak. This is Michael Popak, Legal AF reporting. Lock him up. Indictment season is upon us. Celebrate with the new indictment season t-shirt and v-neck exclusively at store.midastouch.com.